How are you entrepreneurs out there? Today we have a fun one. We have Sabrina Musk. She is an author. She's written four books with her fourth book coming out. It's called A Terrible Dater. It'll be out in the next couple of weeks. We really go into depth with her history of where her writing style came from, why she writes, and how she's able to be so vulnerable in her writing style. I hope you guys like it. Please subscribe. Please share it. Please comment. We'd love to hear your feedback. Have a great one, guys. Welcome to the road to growth, success of an entrepreneur. We've raised the bar. Learn firsthand from successful business owners and create your own path to success. I'm going to show you how great I am. It's time to hit the road to growth with real estate agent Vinny SD. 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 All right. Thank you, Sabrina, for uh, being here today. Yes, thank you. I'm excited to sit down and chat about all these good topics. So, Sabrina, tell us a little about your writer. I'm a writer. Um, I was thinking about it on the drive over here where I do kind of juggle a lot of different hats. Like I, I run Write Less Bad. It's a you know content creation marketing firm. And then I have my books and then I have my blog. And it's all, you know, some are way more creative in my own like passion projects and some is definitely much more like business focused. Um, but it's all writing and it's all um, – sharing and creating a message that really like speaks to the audience whatever that audience may be so um yeah and it just depends on you know sometimes it's really business focused and sometimes it's really ridiculous and humor based so your 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 stories you've written four books right and your stories have changed from holocaust survivors right Mm -hmm. to about your 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 sister Mm -hmm. and that situation that yeah. kind of happened there. And now it's more of kind of a comedic base. But they're all been stories, I guess. I've kind of intertwined them. Yeah. They're, I love sharing personal – like if I'm writing creatively, it's all um, personal experience or sharing someone else's story in a yeah. relatable way that um, really draws in a reader so they can feel it, imagine it, see it um, as if you're like standing there. And – yeah, I mean, when I came out with the Holocaust books and the Musk Girls Love About My Sister's Death, I mean, that was 2009, and then the second Holocaust book was in 2012. Yeah. Very heavy. I mean, I mean, some of the stories are uplifting. There's moments, for sure, that are, like, fun and joyous yeah. and whatnot. But for the most part, like, Holocaust survivor stories are not, you know, like, you're not really laughing. You're, I mean, yeah, you're, I, I mean it I was very – I don't think they're comedy out of that. No, it was very emotionally draining for those few years. Um, and I've been working on this new book, um, man, seven years now, but yeah. not consistently. It kind of started as part of my thesis actually in grad school. And then I kind of like set it aside and then I would revisit and I would write little snippets and, or maybe add like a blog post. And then all of a sudden, just in the past few years, I kind of, you know, was like, okay, I, I really, I, I, I want to put this book together already. And then it transformed again, and it transformed again. And then the past, I would say, six months, I've just been like, you know. So your current book is about relationships, right? It's being single. Yes. It's about being single, about the journey to find love, about discovering one's sexuality. Um, it, it is all my personal experience, but with the hope that's, uh, that people reading it go, oh, my God, that happened to me, or, oh, I have a similar story, and then it opens up conversation. Because yeah. being single is yeah. is kind of ridiculous a lot of the time. So well, well, you started you said seven years ago when you kind of started the book. Yeah. So that seven years ago to now oh, the dating scene is totally, totally different. different. And yeah. I and I talk about okay. that and I I go from you know this is me, I, I you know I had mentioned somewhere in the book about like my my cousin had joked that I was a slow learner when it came to dating. Like <laughs> I didn't kiss a boy till I was eighteen. I didn't lose my virginity till I was twenty one. Like very yeah. slow. Okay, and compared to my sisters and best friends, right? <laughs> um, and I discuss all those changes. So it's like, this is me dating, you know, this is what it, the train was like in Chicago. Yeah. And then I start to get introduced to online dating in this way. And then I moved to Austin and online dating, but then I had this beautiful relationship and then that's, you know, soured. And then all of a sudden, it was this massive, like, you know, huge change with all the dating apps. And I talk about all, you know, and so in some ways, it taking so long was for the benefit of the book. Um, but yeah, it's it's just, it's a very cohesive way to show the progression of the dating terrain over the past decade. 
but that I feel like mo any person can pick it up and read it and go either, oh, I've that's happened to me, mm -hmm. or I felt the same exact way, or man, I've always wondered what it's like to be single nowadays, you know, because yeah. they've been married for 20 years or 50 years, or they met their, you know, high school sweetheart and they never dated. And those people, I'm like, man, what, what is life like for you? Yeah. You know, it's so different. I mean, no, no, you're not, you're not single right now, but you've dated, you know, it's very tough sometimes, yeah. but really funny. Well, the, the, the interesting thing is, is because I'm in the, the real estate profession, I see people from the start to the finish sometimes. I see yeah. them when they, they're in love, they find yeah. that property. Yeah. And then some sometimes where they have to sell the property because they fell out. That, yeah, that, it's actually really funny because I was, so I'm a member down at WeWork. I don't really go into the office yeah. very often, but I had met this guy, very nice, a little bit older than I you know, typically would date. I mean, this was like two years ago now. And we ended up meeting up and we went surfing and I had realized that we had mutual Facebook friends. Mm. And so I messaged the girl who's a real estate agent mm. and she was like, oh my God, yeah, I sold them their house. And I was like, who's they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's like, you know, like, oh yeah, they're this really cute little family. And I'm like, I don't, she's like, maybe they're divorced. Turns out, yeah, she saw them and they were like really happy. Now they're, now he's getting divorced. He has this young kid. I mean, you know, and it's that you see the whole there's so many things that can happen well, in the like, meantime. Yeah, like in, in for her and for, for myself, I, I only see the snippets of it, so I don't get to see what happened in between. So I got to yeah. put the pieces of what kind of happened. Yeah. You know, in in the, the the dating life, the dating world, you get to see it from start to finish. You get to see how it sours. Yeah. You know, because you're because you're there. But for yeah. me, I only get to see like little snippets of it. I saw this post on Facebook. It was like a, you know, kind of like a screenshot kind of joke or whatever. I think mm -hmm. I, I just started following. It might have been from. Hilarious text is the group, and it's okay. ho it's hilarious. Yeah. And um, one of them was, you know, I uh, referencing someone not being very active on social media yeah. and posting once a year, and the you know the girls like, oh. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to stalk you for that whole year and with one photo? Yeah. And how am I supposed to follow the progression of your relationship with that one photo? You know. <laughs> well, being that you've dissected, I guess the single life it is now is it only your your history of the single life would you talk to your friends people you know family members it's mostly me but i bring in other people as examples um you know if i'm talking about it, it's kind of woven into like a whole chapter of many different topics but i talk about you know sleeping with someone on the first date mm. or getting physical way too quickly and i give examples of like my parents slept together on their first date and mm. then my dad dropped my mom off and said, see you later. <laughs> and then like three months later, or th I don't know if it's three months or three years. I didn't include that in the book, so I haven't checked with my parents. But like my mom was obsessed with him. He was older. And then like she called him up one night, like a long time later. And he was like, oh, yeah, I remember you. And then they ended up like getting, you know, literally getting married like six months later. Oh, wow. So it's, you know, I share those examples of like, well, obviously these rules yeah. aren't always applicable and you know it's like there's all these different variations um but it's mostly my experience yeah so. I, well, I would think like and this is what we're talking right here i think one of the the questions i would have the, the rules because i haven't been single for a little while but yeah. it would be how quick after you meet the person or go on a date can you friend request them or social media request yeah, them. You know what I mean? Like, that it's, seems because stocky. And someone could be like. For sure. It's, that's funny. And that's not something I discussed, but it's something that I probably should have discussed. Um, I don't typically friend request. I re friend request. I've, I have noticed myself requesting, like, if I think a guy's really cute. And very rare. Because, yeah. like, most of the time in person, you know, they're kind of awkward. But, yeah. um, you know, it might be, like, a mutual friend. But I. For whatever reason, guys end up, you know, they'll just friend request me. Yeah. And I'm almost <laughs> hesitant to accept it. Yeah. Because even though, like, everything's pretty out there and a lot of my posts are public and you can yeah. go on my blog if you really want to, like, find out about me. Yeah. But there's some things I keep just for my friends, you yeah. know. And I'm like, man, like, I'm going to scare the shit out of this guy. And so I avoid accepting the friend request. But I agree. Like, there's some guys you, like, go on a date and then within, like, an hour it's, like, friend request. And I'm like... No, 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 too soon. <laughs> like, go, you can stalk around, whatever, do whatever you're going to do, but yeah. just, you know, not yet. <laughs> yeah, some kind of boundary. Well, so so you're going back to your writing. You've, your stories are about 
emotional, funny, emotional, but also, you know, can be sad, you know, from based off where, where the stories. Yeah. Have you always been a storyteller growing up? You know, um, I wrote in a journal and in some ways not really. I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life, like as a kid. Um, and I only became tech, like, quote unquote, a writer after my sister's death when I started working on that book, which mm. I didn't even realize was a book until like months into it. Yeah. Um, it just, everything is just kind of like, I've just kind of like tripped over everything else. Like, okay, I guess this is what I'm doing. Um, but no, I wasn't like creating, I, I, I did well in English class, but I wasn't creating stories in this way. Yeah. I would more so create them in my mind or like I'm a very active sleeper. So like I create a lot of stories and yeah. I might share it by myself, but it's not, I wasn't standing in front of a crowd or, or publishing these like short little stories as a you so, know grade school kid. So the 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 story about your sister, mm-hmm. right? The the book that you wrote. Yeah. That were you writing it then just to get it off your chest? Or are you writing it for the idea to to build this build this book something for your? Yeah. So originally it started as um, I originally wrote an article. It what was ended up being included in the book but it was how I used yoga to help myself grieve and it really it wasn't I thought okay maybe I'll just like publish it in a magazine and it would someone may relate to it and Mm. it's so my sister committed suicide so there's a lot of like suicide awareness with it um and it wasn't until someone said like oh yeah the book you're writing because everyone knew that you know most people around me like knew that I was writing 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 and a lot of it was just that I didn't want to like forget her yeah and I wanted to understand what happened because it was a very complicated um like her death investigation like was just closed a year ago so it was like a very complicated scenario it wasn't just like she killed herself you know there we thought there was like foul play which I still think there's foul play but you know, we didn't investigate it properly. Yeah. Um, I was 20, 21 years old at the time. 21? 21. Um, my parents were, you know, kind of like totally just blown apart. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so it, it didn't start as I'm going to write a book about this. Yeah. It just like it developed into that. Yeah. And then I pretty much obsessively wrote and worked on that for like a year and a half. How did how did you? Because I'm assuming there was probably some adversity trying to get the book out there. Right? Yeah. So how did how did you overcome that, or what happened there? Um, you know, most people, I think in to like today yeah. in 2019, suicide awareness is much more accepted, or people aren't so afraid. You know, it's it's just become it's very prevalent. Like yeah. it's almost an acceptable thing yeah. to consider. Where when my sister died. I knew that she was struggling that night, yeah. like because it was a uh, pending divorce and all this other thing stuff going on. But it, it was literally the last thought that would have ever crossed my mind. And nowadays, I think that everyone jumps to it. And so, a book coming out now, hmm. it, it wouldn't have any type of like you know um, friction to it. Yeah. But it was received pretty well. Honestly, the most friction I got was from my family. Oh wow! Um, was for my sisters. They weren't super thrilled about it yeah but um the living ones but um yeah no people people really related to it but i i also because it wasn't just about suicide it was my sister was bipolar it really talks about our family dynamic it talks about grief as in general yeah um you know it goes into a lot of different layers so well and i I think we all have some sort of suicide tendencies or we think think about every once in a while and it's probably even tougher too like we're talking about just like the snippets of people's life especially on social media yeah you only see the pauses now you weigh yourself against someone else i i I just wrote down like a little blurb just to get it out of me Uh, yesterday two days ago i saw this article someone had shared this article i mean the girl committed suicide in 2014 I think this young yeah. young girl at UPenn literally like jumped to her death off the parking structure and perfect life quote unquote on mm. social media um, really beautiful really athletic really smart like no one had any idea and it is I, I you know and I kind of talk about that actually in the a, a terrible date or the dating book um, it's just the highlight reel and no one really most people aren't really open and so i think a lot of my writing what makes people sometimes uncomfortable is because it's pretty out there like 
pretty real. You know, yeah. I mean, I might only feel some a certain way for an hour. Yeah. And but totally be fine and really happy. But you know, I people reach out and are you okay? I'm like, oh yeah, I was just you know just felt an emotion and shared it and that's okay. You yeah. know, um, especially you know certain anniversaries and dates and experiences kind of you know bring things up. Yeah. But but a hundred percent like. You know, who someone is on social media in some situations really is that person. Yeah. And in many other situations, they're very lonely, you know, very unhappy. Um, or they just have snippets of that and they don't yeah. share that. I think it's very, uh, it's a human emotion. It's very natural to have moments of loneliness, to feel like you're not good enough, um, to compare yourself. I mean, that's. Yeah, I th well, I think so. it's for some people it's a sign of weakness by showing that yeah. vulnerability out there. Yeah, hundred percent. And so they're kind of, yeah, so yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. Now, being that you've you've written already three books, I'm assuming getting those books just out there, getting them published, getting people to read it, getting makes you money off it. Mm -hmm. Like, there were were there struggles in in accomplishing that, or for sure, um, writing a book is one thing, and then properly marketing it and selling yeah. it is a whole other beast. Yeah. Um, I didn't do it, you know, however way you want to define right. Yeah. The right way, in my opinion, I was with Must Girls Love. Yeah. The Living Witnesses was kind of its own thing. Um, my mom's a photographer, and she took the photographs of all the survivors. We, yeah. I mean, we covered like 400 international, like, living survivors. Wow. Which was like, I mean, really spectacular. Like, you didn't even know that there were that many living, you yeah. know. And um, really, really fascinating people. Um you know, had been through one of the most tragic things in the history of the world, right? Um, and so they kind of dealt with, like, promoting that and selling that. But it really didn't make money. It's more than anything. It's a passion project. Yeah. It's how can we educate people about these are these stories. They're real people. It's yeah. not just a black and white photo that you see of a holo of a kid in the Holocaust. Like, they're real people. They're, your, you know, your friend's grandparents. Yeah, exactly. Thing, right? Okay, so... With Must Girls Love, I was so young that I just didn't know what to do, Yeah. right? And so a lot of what I'm using right now is, you know, I'm going to be hosting um, a release party somewhere in San Diego. I'm still trying to, like, hammer out those details and figure out if it's going to be down at WeWork or up in Encinitas somewhere or, or La Jolla or wherever it is. And then also one in Detroit um, on February 21st, but it's – how can I use my network of bloggers, because I, yeah. I run SabrinaMoss.com, yeah. how can I use that network as well as other bloggers to really reach as many people as possible? Because I really do, like in my heart of hearts, I, I just feel like any person that picks this book up is going to relate to it because every single person wants to fall in love. Yeah. And every person has done the most ridiculous shit over the years oh. to like, to find someone that that gets them. Yeah. Um, and so there is a ton, a ton of marketing that goes into it. And, you know, I'm still trying to figure out what's, yeah. what is the best way to do that. But a lot of it is just, okay, word of mouth. you know, yeah, word of mouth. How can I get on, you know, do more interviews, have more coverage on, you know, online magazines, have the right people that have a larger audience go, I really like this book. You should read this too. Yeah. Um, because it, it's all about just, connection and feeling like you're not alone and yeah. you know but with so much humor along with it but that's really like the underlying message is you know hey let, we're we're all the same everyone wants the same thing um and let's just laugh about it and learn from our mistakes or at least learn from mine yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i guess it's yeah. maybe the best way to so i'm offering myself up as, on a platter <laughs> to just be completely humiliated so like being what you've learned now, because you've already accomplished by having a couple of books on your name, right? Mm -hmm. Being what you learn now, is there something you'd give advice to your younger self, or maybe a younger writer? Um, in terms of how to write the book or how to market it. Well, how, how to how to write the book, how to market it, yeah, how to. I I think um one of the things that took me a while with Must Girls Love, I kept. I wasn't finishing the book and I wasn't finishing the book and I didn't understand why. Mm. And then I had this experience and it was like, oh, I really need to talk about how I was really struggling. Yeah. And I put this block up where 
I was very open throughout the book and yeah. like really raw. But there was a section like literally like cut out of the timeline of like, hey, this is what was really going on with me. Yeah. Um, and so what I learned is that that's really what people connected with the most. Like the realness of, you know, yeah, we know that someone struggles after death. But like, what does that really look like and yeah. how intensely? And so with a terrible dater, I tried as best as I could really not to hold back. Yeah. Um, but also be really intentional with like, you know, we were joking before this yeah. podcast started where, I mean, there are a million more stories that I didn't put into the book as embarrassing as that is. Like, yeah. I, you just, you have to be very choosy with what is the overall picture that you're creating, you know, like what is this, the message you're delivering and what stories, even though there's like this, you know, huge bank of them, which ones are going to make the most impact on a reader um, to make them at the end of the story go, ah, yeah, this is how I should, you know, I, I want to feel this way too. And I want to use this book as like an inspiration to, like my last chapter, I think the last chapter is titled, Fuck It. <laughs> you know, and it's just, you I mean, the, the crap that you hear from people all the time yeah. and the pressure and it's like, you know, just have kids, get married, do this, do that, you know? It's like, Jesus Christ, I feel like I'm still 16 years old. <laughs> like, leave me alone. So, yeah. It's I, kind of funny it, how you break it down because really you have the peer pressure like in high school as younger, okay, you got to do this, do this. Yeah. And then even in your social uh, circles, peer pressure when yeah. someone has a kid or yeah. gets married, so on and so forth. Yeah. I have um, a girlfriend of mine always says, she's, she's old, she's um, late 30s, Hopefully I don't mess up her age, but late 30s, she's a comedian. And so she's super funny about it. But mm. she, you know, she'll say like, I'll post a picture of me holding my friend's kid and the amount of comments like, oh, that looks good on you. <laughs> or I was, I had this woman reach out to me. I don't remember what the connection was, but it was a matchmaking service where she was asking me like, hey, can you help me find someone? I love matchmaking. Mm. And I don't really do it very often, yeah. but I do love it. Yeah. And and I go, oh, you know, well, I'm not, re you know, I, I have maybe a couple people in mind, but, you know, da 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 And I reference my boyfriend or, like, I, you know, I'm in a relationship right now. I'm, I'm not really, like, hanging out with, like, going to, like, bars that I could, like, look for you, yeah. you know, that often. And she wrote, oh, congratulations on your, you know, as if, like, it was such a relief to her and to people, like, oh, you found someone. Yeah. Well, like, so am I not okay if I don't have a boyfriend or yeah. girlfriend, if you're or whatever, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, a gay, yeah, yeah. straight man, woman, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And it's just, it's that mindset of, you know, this is what you're supposed to be doing, which is very hard. I mean, it's so built into us and it's very hard to kind of go, okay, like I hear you, but that's not like, I'm going to do it my own way kind of thing. Well, there's e even like, um, I've been lucky enough to travel and live in other countries Yeah. and you see how relationships are formed mm -hmm. in those other countries or how a relationship should be in those other countries. And you go, wow, I thought relationships go this way. Yeah. Okay. No, that was the way yeah. that my circle told me it was supposed to be. For sure. Every culture is different. Every yeah. culture, you know, it, it, it de I mean, obviously it depends on, uh, on the area. Yeah. Um, there's very few places in the world that really don't, you know, operate as quickly as, as the U.S. Yeah. Um, but for sure, like certain ways of courting here is completely different here. And where in this country being 18 years old, pregnant and married is that's the norm. I mean, it's just, and it's even within the U.S. Yeah. It's not like my culture and whatever was surrounding me, yeah. what, what I was brought up with and what I surround myself with as an adult is very different from a hundred miles away, Yeah, you know, or the Mormons or the, this, or the, you know, um, I don't know, you know, I mean, it's just every culture so different and it's how can you figure out what works for you, not feel and not just acting because you're out, like feel like you're pressured to do something. Um, I don't know. No, no, I, I but it's I, all, it's all commentary. Yeah, it's yeah. all, you know, and, and not to say that I, you know, I was reading through my book, um, I was going through like the last edit this weekend and I even thought to myself, I'm like, man, I'm not even following my own advice. <laughs> you, know, it's like, you think it, you say it, you write it, you feel it. Yeah. And it's still hard sometimes to go just 
stick to your guns. Like, this is, that's not what you want to do right now. Like, just do what you want to do. So, I don't know. It's having a relationship game plan, right? Oh, I know. <laughs> I just, like, I, I I say to my boyfriend, Joe, like, I can't remember. I'm like, oh. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you're not propo- – I'm like, yeah, don't – please don't propose to me right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I – aren't you so – and I'll always say, like, aren't you so happy I'm not one of those girls, like, begging you to pro- – like, please, I will say no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not ready. Don't want that right now. So if um, if you guys listening love this, this kind of humor that Sabrina <laughs> offers – Get her new book. It comes out again when? Um, Valentine's Day. And there's going to be a couple release parties. I'm planning one for San Diego and one for Detroit. And then maybe kind of in between. But Valentine's Day, I made it. I thought that would be hilarious. Um, it, I, I almost should have made it on February 15th yeah. for all the time. Everyone that, like, had a crash course on Valentine's Day and was pissed at their significant other. And they go, I'm going to buy this book now, you know? So if you, if you maybe don't have that special someone on Valentine's Day, buy the book, enjoy yes. the book, and you yeah. can live vicariously through Sabrina. Yeah, there's, there, there's a lot of experiences to relive, so you'll, you'll get a good laugh. And, and if they wanted to follow you online, what's the website again? It's sabrinamus.com. In I, most of my social media is at the Sabrina Mus. So for Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, I think. And so um, all the release parties are going to be on the website. They're all, yeah, I have, yeah, there will all be events on Facebook that are advertised. Um, Instagram's a great way to follow me. Um, you know, I'll share links and whatnot there. So, but it's all be on the, it'll all be on the website as well. Okay, and so yeah. right now, so we have the next book of uh, a terrible dater. S- terrible dater. Yeah. So for the single life dating that kind of thing, yeah. I'm guessing the next book is going to be how you should how you should get married, have kids, and that kind of thing. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. All right. Well, thank you, Sabrina. Thank we you. enjoyed it. Uh, have a great one. If you guys uh, want to take a look at our website, again, sabrinamus.com, please subscribe, Road to Growth, share it with your friends. We'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks. Thank you for listening to The Road to Growth, Success of an Entrepreneur. Please like, subscribe, and stay connected. Visit www.vinnysd.com. Yeah, I created a website. Hope to see you again next week. Team Vinny SD, signing off.